Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well, and that you're all having a great day. To start things off, the crypto strategist, popular for applying the stock to flow ratio to Bitcoin, reveals that the model has printed a signal that has not been seen since the crypto bull run of 2017 in a viral tweet. The anonymous analyst known as Plan B provided a crucial update to the stock to flow ratio model for his 105,000 Twitter followers. The stock to flow model compares the amount of a commodity or something in circulation divided by the amount produced every year. The model is traditionally used to analyze the intrinsic value of precious metals such as gold and silver. Plan B's model shows that Bitcoin stock to flow ratio increases as the rate of new Bitcoin supply decreases over time. The crypto analyst also illustrated how the value of Bitcoin closely follows the cryptocurrency stock to flow ratio using dots. The first red dot after a series of blue dots signifies the first month after each halving, an event that reduces the pace of new Bitcoin entering circulation. Here's the chart right here. I understand it is probably incredibly small for a lot of you. I hope you can see this one. Uh, usually, if you're looking at the actual chart right here, whenever there is a red dot, it is usually then followed by a price increase. So we have a $12 Bitcoin going to roughly a $120 Bitcoin, whatever this number might actually be. Red dot around an $800 Bitcoin. The flow finishes around the time of a $12,000 Bitcoin, give or take. And we have just, I mean, it says red dot released as if like we're releasing a monster. Uh, here's the actual red dot right here, which would, I guess, in some way indicate uh, that this is the beginning of a major movement upwards, which to be fair is exactly what this guy had said before. So apparently his chart appears to be working. The chart shows that Bitcoin's stock to flow ratio has increased. And now it coincides with the appearance of the red dot in his model. The first such red dot in three years. Based on his chart, a red dot indicates the start of a new bull cycle. So I guess uh, the last cycle, or rather the other cycles were roughly 2013, ended around the end of 2013. I mean, that to be fair, that is a very huge increase to go from $12 to just a smidge. Oh, that, that, this was a $1,200 Bitcoin then. Okay, that took about a year for that to happen. This was the middle of 2016. You go from a what is that, seven, eight hundred dollar Bitcoin to the end of 2017, roughly about a year and a half. So that's going from 800 to 20,000. So I guess you know what's really no, no wait, 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 wait. In terms of June, the the news that we had been had been getting is that a sentence? Uh, the news that we previously had viewed in the long, long ago was that this bull run or when we entered into a proper bull run that it would take roughly around a year to complete its full cycle which and also led us into that um remember all of the the predictions for bitcoin's price that we had that by the end of 2021 we would either have a 100,000 or a quarter of a million dollar bitcoin and i guess the math would check out 12 to 1200 and 800 to 20,000. I mean, those are some those are some big Xs. Anyway, um yeah, I maybe am not sure if it's simply the trend of time that we were talking about before. We have seen in the past that Ethereum usually gets around a good 4 or 5 days. Bitcoin gets into the news for about a good 6 7 days. Uh this may just simply be at the moment uh Bitcoin's time to shine in the news. This one says Bitcoin closes May candle above crucial resistance. And that's big for the bull case. This one says sharp U.S. futures recovery. Hence, Bitcoin will retest 10K this week. And then what does this one say? Uh, price analysis, bill, uh, bill coin. Bitcoin balances above 9,500 as analysts predicts rally to 100,000 U.S. dollars. Sounds about right. Uh, so, well, I mean, we... Only time will tell. We'll see exactly what the rest of this week brings for us. At this point, I, I, I literally think it's impossible to say. I can't tell you where it's going to go, and neither can anyone else. Um, 
However, um, everyone seems optimistic for the moment. I give it to Wednesday, maybe Thursday. We'll start seeing articles popping up once again about how Bitcoin is looking weak and Bitcoin's price is going to uh, slide down while Ethereum will be doing awesome, amazing, phantasmagorical things. Let's move on. Next up. After under, yeah, see, here we go. After underperforming Bitcoin for weeks, Ethereum saw a healthy rally this week that saw it reach 245 US dollars on Saturday. It says, you may not know his name, but Gary Tan, a Microsoft employee turned executive of a startup, turned founder of Initialized Capital, was one of the earliest cryptocurrency bulls in Silicon Valley. According to this article from Venture Accelerator's 500 Startups, his fund, Initialized Capital, was the earliest investor in trailblazers eh, like Coinbase and Instacart. That is to say, he was a seed investor in Coinbase worth $8 billion at the time of valuation by his own accounts. He also holds some Bitcoin, the first of which was given to him by Coinbase's CEO. And now he's made it clear... <clears throat> He also owns Ethereum as well. It said, started accumulating money sign ETH again. On the 30th of May, he wrote that he had started accumulating Ether again. Wow. Adding in subsequent comments that he is doing so for the long-term hold rather than short-term trading due to taxes. As a pertinent aside, the initialized capital managing partner said he has continuously been stacking sats that would suggest that he is, or at least was, more optimistic about Bitcoin. I tried my best to get away from this article. No matter what I did, I, I could not get away. Uh, for some reason, the um, news story is a rich person has been buying crypto. And this was all over the place. Um, is anyone out there surprised that there is someone who was an early investor in Coinbase? is also stacking Ethereum and or stacking sats? No one? Okay, just, just, just was wondering. Um, because I saw this on about seven different websites and I assumed, I was like, maybe I'm missing something. A lot of times when I see tons of, uh, I'll see certain news stories that just really aren't necessary in the slightest, leastest at all. Um, but then I kept, I, I keep seeing articles sometimes and I'm like, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm missing the, 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 the hyper-significance in all of this. One can only assume if we have banks and institutions and other banks who have claimed before that they are not into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, also accumulating uh, cryptos as well, one can only then theorize that someone who was an early investor in Coinbase, presumably with millions of dollars, I'm going to assume he did not throw them a five and say, good luck, uh, that he's also accumulating Ether as well, especially as we get closer to the, um, the Ether having, the Ether tenthening, whatever you kind of want to call it because of the um, reduction rate of the supply. So, yeah. Um, I hope this news story made your day. There's another rich person who's buying up tons of ether. So, um, if that means something special for you, then by golly, here we are. Uh, let's move on. Next up, the official spokesperson of the Bank of Lithuania has announced that the financial outfit has rolled out plans to back up the sector of the country. Sector of the country. Yeah, that are not in that. that that's a weird sentence. To back up the sector of the country that are not in the finance sector. According to a report submitted by Europe World News, the financial powerhouse commenced and completed a blockchain sandbox known widely as the LB chain. The LB chain adopts the distributed ledger technology to help the non-financial aspect of the economy, especially the finance and banking industry sector. The LB chain centers around distributed ledger technology, technology, weird, that encompasses all of the finances or features of many modern day blockchain protocols and will be used by the Bank of Lithuania to help the finance sector of the country. Logical. The new initiative is a blockchain powered, researched and powered 
and would generally be used in banks and other aspects of the economy that deserve it. The new platform promises to help users, okay, not only from Lithuania, from their neighboring countries to broaden their skills and acquire a new skill set. This sounds like it does everything. Wow. The new development is the first DLT-powered platform in the country and will act as a watch for the sectors that would use it. The government of the European country has said that they will be in charge of the platform, which makes it the first time one that will be government managed. Uh, this was also everywhere. I, 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 don't, I don't know what's going on with the news anymore. Um, sure, this is yet another country who has tested blockchain and or made their own blockchain. Uh, countries having their own uh, electronic crypto blockchain sandbox is not new. It is a way for them to keep an eye on things happening in the sector within their borders. Uh, I guess the news is that it was created by the Bank of Lithuania, but this is also to be expected. They what, what, what countries are always trying to do is to make sure that they maintain their power. If, I'm sure there are at least five geniuses within Lithuania uh, who are probably were maybe on the cusp of creating their own blockchain that also could have been used for one of these things in the bank, of course. Uh, they want to maintain their power so they create it themselves. Not saying that their blockchains are going to work, but they make sure that they are at the forefront of all of this technology, or at least claim to be so, so that when other people, the entire idea always is, they create it, and then banks create something else, and then they say, we created ours first, use ours. Ours is better, ours is faster and cooler and stronger, and therefore it should be the only one that is being adopted. Uh, so no surprise that a bank created their own blockchain, that they're using it to... Um, the other part here where it says like for to, to acquire new skills, this all, I mean, you've seen it before. These things are created in an attempt to tell people that it's good for them when all it does is lock people down even further and have every single transaction that they're performing, even at their most private times, uh, to be traced as well. So, good job. Um, also news that was everywhere. I don't know why, is it that people are surprised that banks are adopting blockchain or creating blockchains or that another country has, I mean, if France and Germany are clearly headfirst in the cryptocurrency pool, of course Lithuania and surrounding countries would also join in at some point as well. That's that news. And let's move on. Why does this, what's that smell? Oh, it smells like breakfast. Anyway, okay, let's, let's move on. The, ho the whole room smells really good. Uh, Coinbase is expanding its Tezos staking service to select European countries. The San Francisco-based exchange announced on Thursday that users in the United Kingdom, Spain, France, and the Netherlands would now be able to stake Tezos through its proprietary staking service. They said Coinbase is offering an easy secure way for UK and certain European Union customers to actively participate in the Tezos network. The exchange said in a press release, while it's possible to stake Tezos on your own <laughs> or, or via a delegated staking service, it can be confusing, complicated, and even risky with regard to the security of your staked Tezos. Should I talk about that now or should I wait? So, so um... There are many platforms that offer uh, Tezos staking. Uh, Coinbase is, yes, one of them, but the other ones aren't really, it's not that complicated or confusing. For those of you who don't know what a Binance is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with Binance, 99.9% .9 of the time, you can also stake your coins on Binance, and all you have to do is have it in your Binance wallet, and I'm pretty sure that most of the time, Binance is also not charging a fee. So, that's a lie. Coinbase first launched its staking service in the US back in November. It claims customers have earned well over $2 million in crypto since then. That's not a lot of money. And then the press release, the exchange said staking offers a new lucrative alternative to more traditional investments such as equities or bonds. That is, that, that's a truthful statement because bonds, especially government bonds, have like a, it's like 
one percent uh money back interest rate and the 30-year government bonds it's it's all complete garbage so that's 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 a true statement coinbase 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 which only listed tezos last july estimates the current annual earnings for users staking tezos comes in at around roughly five percent with coinbase taking a 25 percent fee i say once again a 25 percent fee here's their blog post for it um cool uh i mean i will slightly tip my hat in their direction for making sure that they are expanding their services to other places around the world um however there and, and it's, it's not even binance anymore like there are multiple places where you can stake your crypto uh and have very low fees and still receive the roughly five percent return uh it is true it is a much better or more lucrative alternative to um equities or bonds however yeah stop it uh and also and i and i re and i say this truthfully i wonder how long coinbase is going to try and go on with this uh tezos thing um, as long as Tezos has been around, first of all, backing it up, uh, when they added Tezos last year, I remember, uh, asking people, did they care that they were listing Tezos? And I think I got two comments telling me that Tezos was the best coin in the entire world. Funny how time moves forward and no one's talking about Tezos and Coinbase is still trying to, uh, make, I want to say make Tezos a thing. Sure. Why not? Anyway. Uh, Coinbase has added Tezos to um, the UK, Spain, France, and Netherlands. So if you've been looking to stake your Tezos, I would um, go to Binance and ask Binance what their staking fees are, and then ask them how custody works, and then make your own decision. Here's the blog post once again, and let's move on. Gemini is in the news. Leading U.S. cryptocurrency exchange and custodian Gemini is collaborating with Samsung Electronics in a push to bring crypto to the masses. Gemini will power Samsung's native blockchain wallet, allowing users in the US and Canada to connect to Gemini's mobile app directly from their smartphones. The integration supports people who want to buy sell and trade bitcoin and other cryptos and marks the first time that a u.s crypto exchange has partnered with samsung the new crypto gateway will allow gemini customers to view their account balances and manage their assets facilitating crypto transfers to gemini's cold storage which allows investors to hold crypto offline effectively eliminating access to online hackers tyler winklevoss said the Samsung blockchain wallet is a convenient and secure crypto wallet that allows users to self-custody their crypto directly on their Samsung Galaxy phone, supporting the Samsung blockchain. Samsung introduced its blockchain wallet last year to support the adoption of cryptocurrencies. Earlier this month, the tech giant launched the Galaxy A Quantum in South Korea, the world's first 5G smartphone with quantum cryptography technology. So I guess the news here is um, maybe it's me. I don't care for the Gemini's. Um, however, this is actually a bit cooler than some of the other news that we were getting. Like I, I, I would actually, I feel like this news should be everywhere as opposed to other news that was everywhere. Like the Gemini twins partnering with Samsung, creating an app that allows you to self-custody your own crypto and or allow for crypto transfers to Gemini's cold storage seems a little bit cooler than being able to stake Tezos or some rich person buying Ethereum. Uh, cool, we'll see exactly where this ends up going. I, I think, I think from what I've heard, there was, a, there, there was a recent podcast interview with the Gemini twins and I think Gemini has the, I think the, the largest cold storage crypto storage, I, I think, I, I don't remember. I, anyway, the point is, yeah, so if you are looking to download a new app on your phone today, there's a, that's the Samsung Gemini Twins blockchain wallet mobile app 
is available on your I, I have no idea how to end this story uh i mean it's it's not bad i think it's a little warped like the idea of self-storage on a on your phone that's on an app that's through a i i assume would it be a centralized server i don't really know if the uh samsung blockchain is decentralized enough to anyway that's the gemini twin news and let's move on and to finish things off it says crypto strategist who accurately called bitcoin bear market bottom says bitcoin is poised for an explosive breakout a widely followed crypto trader and elliott wave analyst says that Bitcoin is setting the stage for a strong move up in a short period of time. Benjamin Blunts told his nearly 56,000 followers on Twitter that Bitcoin is gearing up for a rally to 12,000 US dollars. He said, when Bitcoin finally does break out of this range, it is going to be explosive. I'd say 11K within three weeks and possibly 12K within a month. So, uh, that was just the 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 finishing story. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure you get to the hint that many people across the planet are assuming that within the next couple of weeks, Bitcoin is going to have a major movement upwards. Um, let's see. Um, for oh yeah, first of all, happy June, everyone. Uh, this year has been a this year has been a doozy, and we're we're barely just halfway through it. So. Welcome. Um, and the other part being uh, all the news that, well, we have apparently, so saith the Twitters, uh, Bitcoin is going to break out of its range this week. In three weeks, it may be 11K. In a month, it may be 12K. Uh, we have eight days until Cardano is going to begin to start the launch of Shelly. And then a good 29 days until that full implementation, so we have heard, is 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 there. Um, and I believe, yeah, so the Ethereum 2.0 thing isn't happening anytime soon. But, I mean, no, 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 no. It's supposed to be happening in quarter three. Um, happy quarter three, everyone. We are here. Uh, yeah, looking like pretty good times. I, I think, uh, logically... We just simply need for Bitcoin to break out of this range and shoot up for the entire market to also uh, share in its bountiful glory of price upward trajectory. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Hold on, I have to sneeze. Crayola Michelle, you are L on Crypto with Lionel. Tigra Machonisa. Bake me a cake, Arf Medic 17, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, Body McBoatface, Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Cow Skips Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mangialavori, Paxis, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich the Third, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damian Nicholas, Run Earth One Piece One Love, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Adobo, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Master Ventures in Thailand, Moher Maroney, Adam Graysick, Todd Mullis, A Bibliophobia, The Animal Reader, John Sarson, Nos nope, Nosromo, Chongololo, Tsongololo, Martin Stoyer, Joshua Vineyard, The Pothead, Moonman High, XRP, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Oscar Maldonado, and Professor Wally from Gunbot University. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the new channel. Thank you to everyone who is a member of this channel, and thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. At the moment, roughly the entire market is in red. Bitcoin is down, but not down down. It's down by 0.25%. Ether is down by 0.28%. XRP is down by 0.66%. You get the, the trend that I'm talking about. Thing, it, it, it looks like Bitcoin's slight slope downwards has caused other coins to kind of all as well um chain link is up uh, sure why not um let's see where this ends up taking us i think the news that we had was that today the futures contracts were um expiring omise go is up by 9.7 percent i don't know if i don't remember honestly if today was the day that is being like full added <clears throat> To Coinbase, but apparently um, something is 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 moving it. 
Um, yeah, we'll see where the rest of the week takes us. Isn't it? Wait. Jeez Louise, it's only Monday. Uh, we'll see really where the, where, where the rest of the week takes us. I do hope that you all enjoyed this wacky, crazy news. It would be nice, I mean, if this is the beginning of the, the upward cycle. I, for one, would not be upset. I do hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you. <laughs>